Okay, I wanted to put a cowl on my uh, on my cockpit because uh, I wanted a little strength. So I was gonna match the 3 8 because I use that 3 8 joint right there. The cowl I cut is out of 3 8 so I made it an inch and three quarter wide. I just made a template of my hole. Uh, took a piece of cardboard, folded it in half. So now I got my template. I drew it out on my board. Transfer my inch and three quarter line, got my line. So I'm gonna cut this ring out. And then I'm gonna use it on the top to see if it looks okay. If it doesn't look okay, I'm just gonna piece it in and put it on the underside. So uh, at least I got the strength from it. But I'm not sure how this is gonna look. Um, so we'll go from there. Okay, I got the cowl cut out, got it in place, and I'm just trying to decide whether I wanna put it on top. You know, of course the color will be changed once you fiberglass it. But it kinda ruins my, uh, my stain lines. And, uh, I'm not really sure about it yet, so, uh, I'll have to look at it for a bit and see what I think and decide whether I wanna put it on top or underneath. Okay, I went ahead and epoxied uh, the ring on the cowl, got it all clamped up, and then uh, once I get the clamps off, I'm going to put my second coat of fiberglass on the top and then get it on there, kind of help hold that together. Even though I'm going to find some nice little brass screws, put all the way around the perimeter, but uh, it's 3 eighths and a quarter, so it's only I only need like 5 eighths screws, I'm going to have to go shopping. Okay, I just put my other coat of fiberglass over the top. and. Fiberglassed in these edges real good on the cowling, so I'll help hold it in. So I'll uh, hit this with some 80 grit, 60 or er, yes, 80 or 100 grit after it's done, and put on a second coat just to seal this uh, stain up real nice. Okay, I got my seat back done. Um, I did incorporate a little bit of rock. So you can see the top is about an inch away from the cowling, so when I, I get an inch of rock each way, so depending on how upright you want to sit, you got a little bit of adjustment. And I'll show you how I did it after I take it apart. In all the reading I've done about kayaks, I see they talk a lot about tracking. And since this one's kind of basically a flat bottom boat, um, I put a little rib on the bottom. It's an uh, inch and eighth wide, seven eighths tall, and then I kind of took the, the sides off on the bottom to make a little bit of better shape. Did the front real nice, smooth. Come back an inch or so so I could get a good mount. And I wasn't messing with uh, putting a screw in the tip. So I did that all the way down. I fiberglass clothed it, fiberglassed it down. I screwed it like every eight inches before I fiberglassed it and hopefully it doesn't make it worse but I'm sure it won't it'll just help it track straight a little better alright I got the whole cockpit ring done I ended up cutting it out staining it I epoxied it to the to the top and after the glue set and then I put some nice little screws in there with some little washers you see they're kinda raised they're kinda nice looking they're brass um, Got the back of the seat done. Built these little gussets in the back with a pivot hole. The seat to mount the foam to it, I made it the same way. Put a little pivot hole in the back this way whenever somebody's sitting in it. It can kind of give a little bit each way. Um, the bottom for the seat foam, the mount, I made to where I just put a couple of the one by fours on the bottom and then it supports it on the sides and then this way once that seat is in there and I get in there and sit in there I can mount it a couple different spots a couple mounting holes so then depending on who's sitting in it they can uh, we can adjust it a little bit all right the foot pegs this kayak seemed a little wide to me to have the foot pegs all the way on the outside it didn't feel comfortable like having your feet that far wide so I built a plate for my feet in the middle, I've seen uh, some designs online. I did the same thing as my seat back, but this time I put three holes. So this way, not only 
you get a little adjustment this way you can adjust it back and forth for your feet I don't know how it'll work um, I just screwed these gussets in there just in case it doesn't work out I can pop them back out and redesign it but that's what I'm gonna start with okay I did some paddle research and yeah I could buy a paddle but I'd like to make my first one so I got an inch and three eighths poplar eight foot long um, closet rod I'm gonna use that for the the handle and then I started cutting out my paddle shapes I made these 12 inches wide and I think they're close to 30 long um, this thing overlaps almost 16 inches once I cut the slots and the handle so I'll probably tweak these a little bit more because the shapes on the the store-bought ones are a little bit different so we'll see how that goes I use 3 8 ply and I'll fiberglass cloth it and fiberglass the whole thing but I don't think I'm gonna fiberglass my pole I think I'm just gonna do that for the paddles and just past where they the pole connects and then I'm just gonna uh, polyurethane my handle so it's not as thick I'm not sure how rough it'll be and I don't want to add any thickness because that inch and three eighths is actually a little thick for your hand so we'll see okay here's my paddle I uh, cut the blades out of 3 8 ply I cut my slot in my dowel um, epoxied it to the blades and then I ended up putting some screws in there just to be safe ground them off smooth use stainless so it don't rust and in the middle I wasn't sure about the offset so I made this piece it's got the the 90 on the one end and then the 22 and a half and the 45 on the other so I can get four different settings depending on which end I move um, I stainless screws on them too figured that was the easiest way because I wasn't sure about the offset because I've never uh, kayaked before so this way I got the the option the blade shape I got free off the internet and the what was it John Copens com J J Copens com is the website and it gives you a couple different paddle uh, blades to uh, go off of. Okay, the blades I actually had in a I had a bunch of clamps, had them clamped to where I had a piece in the middle, and kind of give them a little bit of just a little bit of radius. So now I've actually propped up each end and put some weight in the middle, and that's my that's my radius. So I'm actually gonna fiberglass this side first with the weight on there and see if I can keep some of that radius with the fiberglass matting and then flip it over do the same to the other side and whatever I gain radius wise I gain if it ends up being perfectly straight I don't, I don't make it much difference I see the ones that you buy a lot of them got a radius to them so we'll see how it works out okay I got the paddles all uh, fiberglassed and epoxied on the one end I just did what I could do around the edges and then uh, flip it over and do the other side. And while I was waiting, I got some, uh, I had a cedar 2x6 or 2x8, whatever it is, and I took and uh, cut some half inch strips. I'm going to use that for my rub rail. So I really didn't care about the, I don't know, the integrity of the wood. I like because it's got the knots, so it'll add a little accent. And then uh, I might even stain it dark, even though it'll ruin the cedar, but uh, it'll go with the, the color scheme of the kayak. Okay, there's the first piece of uh, rub rail. It's uh, what half by two cedar. I took and cut it off that two by six. Took and uh, used one inch brass screws. Got it started. I left a little lip on the top. I don't know, not even an eighth. And then uh, once I got it on there, I took my plane, little plane, and even that edge out so it was all the same as the top. And then I'm not sure if I'm going to stain it or if I'm going to leave it like it is. Okay, I decided to stain, stain the uh, rub rail. Um, I just taped it off even though the stain wipes off the, the fiberglass wood pretty decent. I figured it would be just as easy to tape it off, stain my rub rail, then I'll fiberglass it on, epoxy it, and then uh, I want to fill up a little bit of the gaps. and. 
I got it pretty smooth as far as level, but there's just a you know slight gap. I want to fill it up, and it'll help hold it on too. It's screwed pretty good, but uh, I just did the brass screws every so often. Okay, I got the rub rail all stained. I ended up, uh, I don't know if I showed you in the other video, I taped it all off on both sides just to be sure. Even though the stain will come off that fiberglass wood, I wanted to make sure, just make it a little easier to clean up. So yeah, it went a lot quicker. Okay, paddle's all done, put together. Got the stainless collar with the, the four different sets of holes so I can get my different uh, offsets. Stainless uh, bolts. I uh, ground the other side smooth so that the nuts don't get in your way. Got my foam in for the seat. Got it marked out. Actually, I just sat up there and gave myself a rough estimate. And then uh, I went on a half inch out. I did a dotted line so I kind of see where I'm at if I cut out the, the line, the first line. I just bought this uh, thing for my angle grinder. It says for coarse paint removal, and it's just like a gnarly plastic, uh, uh, almost like a thick steel wool, which I got some of those too, some of the little steel wool pads, different grit, uh, 36 grit sandpaper for my other sander. We'll see how this stuff works. Here's the, uh, I did the spar urethane, two coats, Everything's shining, ready to go, and uh, we're on to the seat. Okay, I got a piece of three inch foam, marked my butt out on it, sat on it a few times, started using that uh, that sander disc. Um, they're real aggressive, so you gotta watch which way it's gonna grab and go, so I just stood on the floor, put my foot on the foam, and just ground you know, around a little bit, shaped it for a while, and then I'd sit in it, kinda see how it felt, and. And then you switch to, to the hand stuff. Nick Shade's got a real nice video on his website. Shows the whole process. Um, the back, I went ahead and uh, cut a piece. I sliced a piece in half, so it was only an inch and a half thick. Um, I just got to spray glue that stuff on there. And she's about Okay, I bought some 3 8 nylon cord. I made some nice little handles. Went ahead and fiberglassed them. And then put the polyurethane on them just for protection. And then... I'm not sure how long to make these, if I should make them to where they come over the end and then they can hang down underneath, but that's what it'll be, you know, just some kind of handle, one in the front, one in the back. Uh, seats all in, I think I showed you this last video, cut me some cup holders in the back. Um, I just mounted this once I got it set to where I wanted it with a one inch brass screw there and I made me a little access hole one inch brass screw there. Uh, seat works out great. Nice tilt. Foam is awesome. Um, I bought my one kayak carrier for the top of my car. Got my MTI Canyon um, life vest and she's ready for the water. So the next video you'll see will be uh, me and my son and our first uh, test float. We're coming back to the drop it off, right? Yeah. Okay, we're loaded up with the kayak on the uh, rooftop and off we go for our maiden voyage. It's, uh, what is it, August 10th, 2014. Here's the maiden voyage, Branson uh, kayak, little lake in Ashcombe. It's kind of hard to get to it, but uh, we made it. Beautiful day, a little warm. Yay, Brian, it floats. I had a little champagne bottle of bubbles too I was gonna bring. What? You're supposed to christen it. Like a real ship, they use a whole, like, whole bottle of champagne. All right, can I have the other panel? 